Welcome to Discovering. Cross country skiing and snowshoeing are a great way to get out and enjoy the winter outdoors. We'll check out a couple of events in Delta County. Come on out and do this. This is, this is pretty fun. It's easy. And we'll hear from DNR Director Dan Eichinger about funding allocated to Michigan's parks and recreation. Stick around. It's Monday night and time for Discovering. The secret streams that flow beneath the cliffs of colored stone. Forest thick and healthy with birch and pine and oak. Surrounded by the greatest lakes this world has ever known. The black bear's awesome presence as he roams the hills and fields. Call of the timber wolf, the loon's lonesome trill. The eagle soaring high above, the trout lies deep and still. These are what I treasure, the only way I measure Feelings that I have for this fine land There is so much to discover when you're a long-time lover of northern Michigan One of my favorite things I never do in the winter is cross-country skiing. And I found that exercise isn't that bad if you never do it. Well, every time I film a segment about skiing and spend some time quietly wishing along a serene UP backwoods trail, I'm reminded of what I'm missing. And yes, I'll admit, the exercise feels good. And it's probably good for you too. Actually, cross-country skiing burns more calories per hour than any other sport. The UP is loaded with great ski trails. So no matter where you are, you need not travel far to find one. So cross that excuse off of your list. It's not at all hard to do, so you can't use that one. It's not expensive. You live in the UP, so you already have the clothes. You just need skis, poles, and boots. Too busy? There's the one I use all the time. If you already ski, you're probably pretty good at coming up with excuses why you need to get out on the trail again and again and again. If you haven't tried it, throw out all of the excuses, borrow or rent some skis, and give it a whirl. There's a pretty good chance you'll be hooked. I was at the Rapid River National Cross Country Ski Trail for National Trails Day, a partnership between the Hiawatha National Forest and Delta County Non-Motorized Trails. It's the perfect way to learn what you need to know, get on the trail, and give it a try. We're the Delta County Non-Motorized Trails Organization, and we uh, try to maintain and develop the interconnectedness of the trails across the county. We, uh, we try to maintain them, we try to develop and promote them and do a little education around you know, proper use, good etiquette and that kind of thing on the trails. This is a fabulous opportunity, a partnership between uh, Delta County Non-Motorized Trails, of course, and uh, the National uh, Forest Service, Hiawatha National Forest. They come out and they put on this trail days, uh, or help us put on the trail days, and uh, we partner with them to do some uh, Get the people out on skis and snowshoes, enjoy the wonderful winter in the UP. You gotta embrace it. So my name is Brenda Rabitsky. I'm the Recreation Program Manager on the Hiawatha National Forest, which is where we're at today at National Winter Trails Day, Rapid River uh, National Ski Trail. And we are having a partnership with Delta County Non-Motorized Trails for the last few years to groom and maintain this awesome trail system where you can ski and snowshoe all winter long. So the ski trails here at Rapid River National Cross Country Ski Trail are on the Hiawatha National Forest, which is your federal forest that everybody can come out and enjoy. Um, but we're in a partnership with Delta County Non-Motorized Trails to be able to groom them and maintain them and have them in this pristine condition as long as the snow falls um, for folks to enjoy. So it's been quite an opportunity for us to be able to provide more resources and more uh, things for the public to do by joining in with this partnership agreement. So we don't have a warming hut here, but we definitely have the ski trails to come out and enjoy. Uh, other opportunities on the Hiawatha National Forest are at Valley Spur Ski Trail and Naquamanon Trail Network, or NTN, and Friends of Valley Spur help groom and maintain that location, which has even more trail systems to um, get out there and cross-country ski. And we also have some of the fat tire bike trails out there now. So there's all kinds of different winter activities to go and explore um, on the Hiawatha National Forest. 
Those are two highlighted areas. The other area that we highlight for skiing is McKeever Hills Ski Trail. And there's plenty of ski trails there along with a cabin that people can rent out um, for overnight stays. So that information can be found on recreation.gov if you're online looking for information of where else to get out and enjoy the winter. I'm a volunteer groomer here at Rapid River Ski Trail for the Hiawatha Forest and DCNT Delta County Non-Motorized Trails. So we have a partnership with them and uh, we have four classic loops that go from beginner to intermediate to advanced and we have two skating loops that are uh, advanced and so we have a very nice trail system here. This is all hills and valleys, ridges I would think from the, uh, the glaciers, I think, put, made this whole place. And uh, it's, it's just a beautiful trail. I mean, once you get out there, it's just, it's phenomenal. Our beginner loop is the A loop. And so everybody starts off with the A loop. And then as you get uh, familiar with skiing and, and you get better with your skis, then you branch off and you do the B loop which is a blue, so we got easy, moderate, most difficult. So then you go, you go into the B loop, and then once you can do the B loop a couple of times and you feel comfortable, because you always want to ski safely, then you move it up and, you, and we, the, the C loop and the D loop. Our D loop, they, there's some hills out here, Yahoo, Holy Walk, Coronary Climb, Popple Ridge, just phenomenal. And they're all, I think if you did all of them, all from A to, you, you're gonna end up with 10 miles at the most. And then our two skating loops are really getting popular with, uh, it's, it's, it's that diagonal and it's a f all flat deck. And that's getting real, and these two are just awesome. There's, there's some hills like that. And then snowshoeing, the last two years snowshoeing has gotten huge. And we have a beautiful snowshoe loop. And there's a little, little deer track down to the river and you're on this side of the Dutch mill and it's just phenomenal. The water's running through there. So that's our snowshoe loop. So we're pretty proud of this place. It started in 1970 with the conservation crew who was the first put the first trails in here and it started with three loops A, B and C and then they've slowly expanded using uh, existing uh, logging roads and stuff like that so it's a beautiful place. For grooming the trails we have uh, yellow stones that have the teeth come down and they level out the trail take the high and lows out and it fills in and then for setting the track this is our uh, our Cadillac of groomers, a Yellowstone Ginsu, it's called, and then it has the track. We don't have to get off. That's the key. The advantage of having the power uh, tr tracker is that, you know, we, when we get where our classic trail meets our skating trail, then we lift, we have to lift up the, the uh, tracker so we don't track the skating loop. And before we'd have to get off and manually take the weights off and put them on the thing and then pull them up. But now with this automation, you just sit there, it's a button, it's all done, everything, it's all automated. We'd have to lift the tracks all the time. And our, tra and our track setter was probably about 100 pounds, so we'd have to lift it up and set it up on top of the, uh, uh, the drag all the time. So it was, it was difficult. And, and we're getting older, so we're all volunteers to do this work. But uh, this has been wonderful. Yeah, um, we, we, we groom to ski and we ski when it's groomed. That's our motto. <laughs> we try to maintain a number of trails across Delta County. There's some wonderful trails in our, in our vicinity, including Rapid River Ski Trails, Days River Cross Country Ski Trails. There's biking trails there as well, hiking and walking as well. Uh, the, the Days River Nature Trail down in Kipling is a fabulous place. The West Side Escanaba Trails, uh, just outside of, or just uh, behind the Gun at Rod and Gun Club in Escanaba there is another great place. The Hiawatha, um, uh, the Hay Meadow Trail is another beautiful area. So we've got some wonderful uh, assets in our community that are accessible to people for, of all ages and all, all kinds of activities. So come on out. The following weekend, I was back out with DCN Trails, this time at the Days River Trail System for Kids Ski Free Day. We're out here today with Delta County Non-Motorized Trails. We doing a, we're doing a little free ski event for the young kids. 
We've got uh, almost three dozen skis. We send them out, uh, get them set up, and have them shuffle step out there on the newly groomed trails at Days River Pathway. Uh, this is a great event for young kids and families. We're just looking to introduce young students and kids to cross-country skiing today so they can come out and uh, we've got loads of skis to send them out on the trail with. Their families usually go with them and uh, they learn how to shuffle a little bit on the skates initially, the little, the little ones of course. Well, it's my 70th birthday today and uh, my treat is to go cross-country skiing with my grandchildren. Four of the seven from my youngest son. And uh, we do have 21 grandchildren, but um, it's a beautiful day in the neighborhood in, at Days River Trail. Out here at Days River Pathway, there's about 10 miles of stacked loops that we use for cross-country skiing. And then there's three and a half miles of a single track loop that we've just developed within the last couple of years. Um, we're hoping to you know, expand upon that as we um, get proposals and so forth to the DNR. Um, but our, our larger goal across the whole Delta County, of course, is to maintain and improve the trails across our, our county connect trails where we can, and, and ultimately get people out to enjoy the outdoors that is so, such a gem here in the, in the central UP. Come on out and do this. This is, this is pretty fun. It's easy. It's really easy. For the most part, well, starting out you have to move like this. Move your feet like this. Then when you're going down a hill, you take these, and you bend down a little bit with your knees. Come February, we're gonna be doing another event out at uh, West Side Recreation Area. So look forward to seeing that advertised in the near future and getting out on the trail, enjoying the wonderful weather in the UP. It takes a lot of work to keep ski and snowshoe trails groomed and ready for use. And it couldn't be done without the many volunteers who give up their time on a regular basis. It also takes money which can come from a variety of sources. I had the chance to talk with DNR Director Dan Eichinger about a large amount of funds that have recently been allocated to the improvement of recreation and tourism across the state. The fact that we had this big $264 million um, backlog on capital improvements, investments in our state park and recreation infrastructure was, you know, in many ways, I think kind of shocking. You know, one of the things the governor asked me to do was try and figure out how we could resolve that infrastructure backlog and to figure out a way that we could make investments back into that uh, back into that system so that we are continuing to meet and support the recreation needs of our public. And those needs have changed over time. I mean, you know, it's not just about providing state parks and campgrounds and recreation areas, but uh, trail networks and all the other, you know, all the other amenities and services that folks um, depend upon us and our local recreation partners to provide. And certainly as we've gone through the pandemic, we've we've seen just tremendous increases in outdoor activity, and that's really a cross category. And it has really highlighted for us how important um, parks and public spaces and open, open areas and connections to nature are to Michigan residents and Michigan citizens. And one of the things that the governor has announced was her intention to use $250 million of American Rescue Plan Act dollars to resolve uh, that state park infrastructure backlog. And then in addition to that, uh, in July, the governor announced that she wants to spend 150 million of uh, American Rescue Plan Act dollars um, to support our local parks and recreation uh, partners who are also providing very valuable park and recreation spaces to Michigan residents. Well, this is like once, you know, once in multi-generation uh, type investment that we're gonna be able to make um, back into the system and that's going to go into thing all manner of things that support that user experience so you know we see on our surveys that people want um, clean facilities they want updated restrooms they want um, there are all kinds of changing demands for services in our campgrounds um, there's a need for us to do you know we've got thousands of miles of roads in our state parks and you know everybody's talking about we need to fix the damn roads well 
I don't get to fix the damn roads uh, in the state parks with the same kind of money that gets used to uh, fix our state highways and, and our surface roads. So we've got to figure out different ways that we can make investments back into this system and support people who are, are using them. And that's what this investment is all about. You know, the story of Michigan, you know, doesn't have one chapter in it for uh, the city of Detroit. And it doesn't have just one chapter in it for the city of Grand Rapids, that there are there's chapter after chapter in that story that are written in the small towns and and the places that are a little bit off the beaten path. And that's um, that's central to who we are as a people and that's central to who we are as a state. And it's important for us to recognize uh, how critically important it is to support the economies uh, all across the state of Michigan from coast to coast across both peninsulas. I grew up in Holland over on the west side of the state. And I can tell you that the Holland State Park uh, drives, you know, drives a big driver of the economy uh, in Holland and in Ottawa County. And that is true wherever you happen to be in the state of Michigan, that, you know, our parks and recreation spaces are, you know, vital, vital members of the economic development community, of the business community and all in all these places. And as you get farther north in the state, you know, the dependence on the tourist based economy, the dependence on people traveling and visiting in these areas, spending money and local businesses and small businesses. We've got to find we've got to find every opportunity that we can to really catalyze, uh, catalyze those investments in our small towns and in our communities that that are dependent on the tourism business and the outdoor recreation business. So this investment, while it is as much about um, fixing our state parks and reinvesting back in our state park system, it's really about you know, making those economic development investments in small towns and communities all across the state that, um, you know, maybe aren't necessarily going to compete for the next big uh, General Motors plant or the next big Ford plant or the next big Amazon hub. But their economic development is so closely linked with the natural resources that we have in this state and for the public spaces uh, that people go and play in and we make investments there and it is just nothing but good for those communities brings dollars brings jobs um, and that's you know that's what we're really excited about seeing you know with with the father's day flood in houghton a couple of years ago um, we'd still been trying to figure out a way and a place where we could you know do some of that last work that we need to do on reconnecting the lake linden trail huge priority for uh, the upper peninsula the western up uh, hugely important for uh, trail-based recreation and hugely important for uh, the communities and the businesses that are connected to that trail network this is the kind of you know this is the kind of source of money that is going to allow us to go in and make the kinds of critical investments that we need to to connect and reconnect in some cases the trail network that is very important i mean what has evolved and changed over the last few years are how how many people are are taking advantage of other trail based recreation so it's not just snowmobiles in the winter now we got a lot of folks that are riding side by sides and ORVs and ATVs on on a very well developed trail network and that you know that brings visitors into these communities on a year round basis and making sure that that system can support that level of of use we want it to support that level of use um, it's going to take some work and it takes some investment and i can't think of really a better way for us to make you know lasting durable impact than use some of these federal dollars um, to make these kinds of economic development investments in in our communities we so heavily depend upon our trail partners whether it's the grooming clubs in the in the winter that make sure that our snowmobile trails are groomed and in good condition um, whether it's our um, our partners in the orv and the atv community who help us you know help us maintain trails and you know do things like erect signage and and that kind of thing so We'll figure out all the creative ways that we can to make sure that those dollars get where they need to be, which is on the ground, um, back into those programs, back into those same systems. And if that means that someone in a green shirt that's doing the work, that's great. And if in those cases, it means that we're, you know, we're regranting money back out to one of our partners that help us maintain part of a trail system, you know, we're, we're going to find a way to do that and, and, and get that money out the door. You know, conservation is a team sport and outdoor recreation is a team sport in this state. It's not something that just the Department of Natural Resources done. It's not something that just our local parks and recreation agencies do. It's something that our citizens and, and the organizations that they belong to and that they support 
uh, are also right there standing, you know, not behind the department, uh, but standing right next to the department and making sure that we have resources that are in good condition that can support all the kinds of outdoor recreation opportunities that somebody would want to pursue here. Well, that's it for this week. Thanks for watching, and I hope to see you next week right here on Upper Michigan's very own Discovering.